Ah, yeah, so a few little babies, and I've noticed Ryan's also put um, a post up. Said to me in the comments um, that Tony has took down that video. You know, the one I was talking about yesterday where he's, he showed um, a DM about gangbanging. And then in the video he's talking about gangbanging. Well, he's either deleted it or privatised it. Um, because it's not there now. So, why? If it was all fun and games like he was trying to make out and he was having a right laugh with his three little cronies, why delete it? Do you know what? He's a proper scumbag. An absolute scumbag. I just wanted to say that first. So, um, let me spit this out. Chewy, sorry. Um, yeah, so the title of this video, I haven't researched not another bit of anything down, so I'm just going to be talking. Um, but it's, I'm going to title it, There's Something About Chucky. Because there is, it's weird. I mean, I'm in England, right? And in England, we haven't got sheriffs. So the whole sheriff system is a bit, I understand it, that it exists, I just don't understand how it works. But I was watching uh, this ex-forensic pathologist talking about what the process will be for doing Kylie's autopsy. And she was saying that, which I didn't realise, in, in, in Shucky, the sheriff is the coroner and is the medical examiner apparently i don't know how that works is that true um so i googled it and the only thing that came california came up straight away which is i didn't type in trucky i just typed in general sheriff coroner and california came up so is it only in california that that system works because to me it's it's absolutely insane that the sheriff, who is obviously top of the police, not only has to investigate crimes, but then has to do the autopsy and be the coroner. Like, where's the division of power? The, the level of corruption that could exist in that little tiny space is unbelievable to me i mean obviously if you live there that's just normal you've accepted it but from someone from the outside looking in that is insane now a lot of my research is focused on in england we've got civil courts criminal courts and a uh, coroner's court where inquests are held um and a lot of my research over the years has focused solely on inquests um, and the coroner's court and the idea that the coroner would be the chief of police is just insane I, I, that's just mad and then i read that um they have done an autopsy on her but they're not releasing anything yet which you know is fair enough but what i really wanted to talk about is trucky right um i can't remember what i watched last night but someone said oh i think it might have been ryan he said that on the same day august 11th when he did the interview with sammy he also done a check-in to Chucky, so I'm guessing, I don't use the check-in thing, I am, um, I turn all that crap off, I'm not interested, so either he was there and he checked in, or he weren't there but he checked in as if he was there, which is even weird. 
So you've got um, Tony Dodge checking in on the 11th to Chucky. You've got Zana May claiming that she's got footage from the Spanish party, which was right next door to the party where Kylie was. We haven't seen this footage. Probably doesn't exist. But then she put a, a YouTube video up of her going over across the lake, right where Kylie's car and body was found. So that's weird. She's also admitted that she camped out there overnight. I don't know the date of that. But during this investigation. Then you've got Check It Man going to the lake finding um, glass and the laptop, the cable. Um, then you've got, what's his name? SS Investigate, he's gone. Ronnie is saying his two cousins were there. Um, I'm not sure about the glare. But like, right, if, you, if you're into true crime, right, which I am, Cast your mind back the last five years of all the cases that have been made, of, that creators on YouTube have made a video of. You know, from the Gabby Petito, Summer Wells, whatever. How many of them cases, even if you do the last year or two, how many of them cases have you seen YouTubers fucking i don't even know what to call these people going to the crime scene walking all over it where the person's gone missing and where the person is found how many why is this case so weird why are people in the i don't even want to say they're in the true crime community because i don't class them as you know they've just popped up out of nowhere but how many other people in other cases have flocked to the crime scene? Now, I know it hasn't been ruled a murder or nothing, but it is a crime scene. It's the last place a missing person was found. It's the place a dead person who was the mess missing person was found, plus the car. So why are all these people going to a crime scene, walking all over this, swimming all over it? I've never known a case where that's happened, ever. I can't think of one. If you can, let me know down below. Um, it's just so bizarre. So bizarre. And then yesterday on... I think it was one of Ryan's lives. They started talking about trafficking and they're not quite sure how it works. Now, I'm not going to go into, um, how, what are we on now? We're on eight minutes. I'm not going to go into a massive video here. But again, um, you know, I've got a criminology degree, I've got a master's in criminology. And I'm currently working on my PhD in criminology. And the main focus of my research over these years has been um, trafficking and child sex abuse um, and institutionalised child sex abuse. And it's led me down so many rabbit holes that are like at one point it made me really ill because i couldn't believe what is really happening and it's not just the cases that you see on the news or in the papers these cases are everywhere my own research has gone from england australia belgium and america and um, recently Ireland and Scotland um, and there's many different 
like format for these organisations, they all operate slightly different, depending on mainly on who the clientele is. They operate very differently. But what one case I do want to mention in particular is. one case this case is reminding me of not necessarily kylie herself but how the police work and it's the johnny gosh case now if you're not aware johnny gosh was kidnapped on september 5th 1982 um he was kidna kidnapped from Des Moines, Iowa. He was kidnapped off the street. He was a paper boy. He was doing his paper round on a Sunday morning and he was kidnapped off the street. What we later found out is he was put in a car and then they drove to the interstate and then from there he was switched to another car where money was exchanged. I'm sure Nordine said it was something like either 12 grand or 17 grand. And then from there, he was driven um, to like a holding place and he'd been picked out because someone wanted to buy him. And this is one aspect of what they do. But going back to when he's kidnapped, it's about seven o'clock in the morning um people start phoning Noreen's house saying you know the paper's late is Johnny awake um Noreen says oh Johnny's gone Johnny's dad goes out to see if he can find them no sign so um Noreen gets eyewitness statements immediately of some of the other paper boys there was a dad there there was a lawyer there um who all attested that there was a man in a car talking to the boys making them very uncomfortable um the police finally come takes them forever even though it's literally over the road and the chief of police at that time is Orville Cooney and he she tells them all about this man and the car and make him you know johnny uncomfortable johnny was scared and he said he was going to go home that's how uncomfortable he was um the chief of police turns up and says completely disregards everything she's just told them and says has johnny ever ran, a, ran away before and noreen's like he hasn't ran away I've just told you what's happened. He's been kidnapped. Um, just disregards her. By now, there's a search team. The search team heads for a local park, start organising themselves, trying to search for this kid. Um, Orville Cooney turns up at the park, drunk, with a megaphone and says, everyone go home. There's nothing to see here. He's just a damn runaway. The volunteers go back to Noreen's house saying, I thought you wanted help. And she says, well, I do. And then they tell her what the police have just done. The police didn't search for Johnny. Turns out later on, Johnny's dad, John Gosh, was involved in a paedophile ring. He allowed his child to be kidnapped. Also in that ring was the chief of police and a few others um, who had power in this town. Now, obviously that case is very in-depth. I, I, I did make a video on Johnny Gosh years ago, but I deleted it because it was crap. Um, I didn't really know how to film properly and my me, me phone and cameras weren't that good. So I may film it again, but that whole thing with Johnny Gosh, 
reminds me of the way the police have been in this case, especially around AWP. Especially saying, you don't need to search you, I've searched it. Imagine if AWP had not have searched it, we would never have found her. So I don't know the politics of Truckee. I don't know how the police department works. As someone from the outside looking in, it's iffy to me, especially the fact that the sheriff is the coroner, which a part of me is still thinking, how can that even be? A part of me is still quite disbelieving it, but yeah. But the main thing for me is all these YouTubers going to a crime scene, walking all over it. It's it's weird. I've never known a case like it. Um, and it's interesting that Tony Dodge has deleted that video from yesterday. Um, very weird. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go out sixteen minutes. So I'll I'll see you in my next one. Take care.